Sponsored by Surfshark VPN. In this episode called One Ed Too Many, Double D finds himself the center of some unwanted attention. Uh, just like when the paparazzi here in Townsville photographed me in the back of my limousine with those three young... <laughs> Mayor, Excuse we're here to talk me? about Ed Eddie. It's time for some new heroes. Sonic heroes. Twelve heroes, four teams, one new game that never gets old. Premiering on Nintendo GameCube. Ready to be for everyone. The way we watch TV today is just not the same. Miss a new episode? Stream it anytime, any day of the week, just for you. Convenience is great, but it's not as monumental as your whole time zone watching the same moments simultaneously. It was an event. TV didn't wait for anybody back then. To watch a show, you just had to be there. One, two, three, four! From 1999 through 2007, Cartoon Cartoon Fridays was a block of new shows and reruns hosted by the cartoons themselves. This is one of those TV blocks, one of those vibes everyone wishes could be brought back, but with how much the landscape of TV changed, it's just something special only those who experience could ever have. <laughs> But what was so great about CCF, and why do I feel it could never work now? Is it because I want to be an asshole? Yes, I do, but there's more reasons than that. So, let's jump in. Let's do some jam time. Around 7 to 11 p.m. is what's considered prime time. This is when most people are watching TV after school or work. Every network wanted the biggest piece of the pie with their own programming blocks of premieres. It's in 1999 when Cartoon Network concentrated its new episodes for Friday's prime time. Cartoon, Cartoon Fridays. Though the beginning of CCF was far different than what many remember. Rather than animated hosts, it was these live action segments treating the lineup as if it was a lottery, weather report, or a call-in show. It's, uh... Interesting. Is your name Ed, Ed, or Eddie? What? Well, you still win. Allie, if you can take that for me. Now, while our volunteers are calling, let's meet someone whose name is Ed. Ed, what do you do? Wedgies. I will admit, the amount of sets and props built was pretty ambitious. I mean, look, Y2K was around the corner. They all probably thought they'd be dead anyway, so they blew the budget on all this stuff. Did kids like it? I'm not sure. Greetings, greetings, fellow stargazers. Oh, damn, is that the MyPillow guy back when he was cool and snorted crack? Legally, I have to clarify, it is not the MyPillow guy on crack, but I wish it was. And it's really quite spectacular. <laughs> This live action format only lasted until the following year. The new millennium came, Y2K didn't kill anyone, so we got the real deal. The most iconic CCF iteration. Hi, I'm back everybody! Welcome to Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. My name is Bubbles, and I'm a Powerpuff Girl. And boy, is this gonna be a big night! Coming up next on Cartoon Cartoon Fridays, it's a whole hour of Courage, then an hour of Dexter, and a brand new Johnny Bravo at 9! Whoa, Mama! Located in a purgatorial white void full of TVs and participation ribbons, the block was hosted by a weekly rotation of familiar characters. Anyone from Eddie, Bubbles, Bravo, or Mojo. In between episodes, characters would cross over and banter with each other. Even if it was just for a few seconds, this was fun to see. A few of these led to some strange implications, like here, Johnny Bravo's mom and Professor Utonium being a little too close to each other. Does anyone out there want Johnny to be a stepbrother to the Powerpuff Girls? <laughs> So CCF was pretty smart, as they made a set amount of host segments and recycled them for years. Should there be a scheduling change, instead of rehiring the cartoon voice actors to re-record and reanimate the lines, they'd rely on a separate narrator. For more behind-the-scenes info, I got in contact with Stephen Patrick, who was one of many writers and producers of CCF, as well as the showrunner in the later seasons. Stephen told me so much, like, you see these white backgrounds? Those were actually multiple live-action dioramas full of vinyl or plastic ribbons. 
Though it was difficult to film as the studio lights would often melt the ribbons. Once the animation studio creating these bumpers, primal screens started doing 3D, it was much cheaper to redo this in CG. Steven also filled me in on an interesting motive for Fridays. You see, when Cartoon Network started, their parent company, Turner, had the rights to a ton of Hanna-Barbera, MGM, and WB shorts. It was free content to rely on. The HP deal gives us more cartoons than anybody. Enough tunes to run for years and years. It brings our cartoon collection up to over 3,000 half hours of toon tonnage. What more could a guy ask for? This is old programming, not least, so we never have to worry about scrounging for shows or bidding against the competition. But in 1986, CN and Turner was bought up by Time Warner. Now that they were merged into a bigger studio, suddenly Warner charged them for a licensing fee to air those classics. To combat this, Cartoon Fridays needed to make their own originals to keep all the profits. Cartoon Cartoon Fridays was important because by this time, CN had a big enough roster of shows to rely on. In their early promos, they were proud to kill the past. Forget your nostalgia. This was the new era. No, seriously. What exactly, exactly are you watching? The same, the same, the same thing you watched when you was a little kid. That's kind of dumb. Kind of dumb. But there's something so much better you could have been watching. It's called Cartoon, Cartoon Fridays. Yeah, fuck Anna Barbera. They can't do backgrounds. This is... Honestly, kind of insane to see them trash the legacy shows. We'd like to think that all of them, all of them, are better than what you used to watch. Used to watch. But he can't rely on nostalgia forever. You gotta introduce new characters like Mojo Jojo. You had a few Friday nights where that villain would host. He'd have a whole intro skit that's nearly four minutes long. No way would TV nowadays waste four minutes of commercial time. And stay tuned for more Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. <laughs> Part of your program. Yes. Wait, probation? That implies hosting Fridays is a punishment. I believe this means anyone who's hosted has committed a felony. Speaking of characters who'd be on a watch list, CCF has a reoccurring segment called Bet You Didn't Know, hosted by Lenny Baxter. He was that nerd that collected Powerpuff Girls merch until he went a little crazy online. A character that's very ahead of its time. Bro, you're not a Sigma male, you just have poor time management skills. That villain had a fun facts segment on various cartoon trivia, stuff like pointing out reused outfits the Eds wore to what else a voice actor has done. We didn't really use IMDB back then, okay? Give us a break. Who is Paul Williams? Well, you know him as the voice of the Penguin on Batman. Be fouled by a couple of fledglings. But I'll bet you didn't know he wrote the theme song to The Love Boat. Now that's talent. Sir, I am like 9 to 10 years old watching this. What the fuck is The Love Boat? Who the hell are you? Get the fuck out of my house. You look like you constantly rewind the Powerpuff anime transformation sequence, you sicko. Clearly that's a nod to the show's creator, John Dilworth. You won't read that on Ain't It Cool News. You've got mail. Wow. Our freaking reference to Ain't It Cool News. One of the earliest geek news sites online. Hope this was before the Blade 2 review. Even with my crude humor, I do not feel comfortable reading that. I need some music to clear my mind of this. Where's Coolio? Yeah, the network frequently collabed with musicians for what they would call groovies, cartoon music videos played during commercials. There were many, but some of the few taking place in the CCF location featured Reverend Horton Heat, Apples in Stereo, and Coolio. This song was part of a collaboration album called The Hip Hop Experiment, featuring artists like Fife Dog, De La Soul, and Will I Am coming together to make original Dexter's Laboratory tracks. Great lineup, but no way would Dexter listen to rap music. He'd hate on that genre while blasting his shitty anime OST. Hey, what was that? Yeah, Julio's song came out in 2002, a year after Jimmy Neutron's premiere. Likely a slam at Nickelodeon. Would not be the first time. Look hard enough and you'll find commercials dissing on each other, including this one that aired on Nickelodeon's turf to promote Fridays. Hurry up! We're not even supposed to be on this channel! Cartoon Network is... Ooh, hey, pretty mama. Johnny! Pretty wild Coolio got dragged into a cartoon gang war. Guess he switched sides after Keenan and Kel ended. Picking your favorite channel back then was no joke. TV fandoms were like boys in the hood. And I was the Ricky. Ricky! 
I also gotta bring up when Nickelodeon got a second channel in 2002. They advertised how this new network of cartoons wasn't actually airing cartoons. It aired Nicktoons on Nicktoons Network. We're Nicktoons. Not just cartoons. We're Nicktoons. Not just cartoons. Fuck you. That's like if I made a rival to Comedy Central called Dramedy Central. Nick even tried their own CCF competitor with Friday Night Nicktoons. I watched it, but beyond the intro, it was very basic. It didn't have the personality or crossover banter of CCF. Maybe since Cartoon Network was the newer channel and usually third place in the ratings, it had to really make a mark. Between this, Toonami, and Adult Swim, I think we can all agree CN was just better with its presentation. They just had more to prove, even during the holidays. Trick or treat, senoritas. I am Johnny Bravo, and welcome to the Cartoon Cartoon Friday's Halloween Party. <laughs> Pretty bubba. Hi yourself, handsome. For the Halloween broadcast, you'd have the characters dress up and act as each other. I never get invited to parties, so I'm gonna assume this is normal. Is it normal to peel the skin off of Johnny Bravo and wrap it around in your face? I hope so. As a live leak enjoyer, this is honestly one of the most disgusting and arousing things I've ever seen. Of course, there were other events. Call-in sweepstakes for games, Super Bowl Sundays on a Friday. Oh, and for the millionth time I've covered this, the Big Pick Weekend. They'd play a bunch of one-off episodes of new shows and kids would vote for the winner that'll become a series. That's how we got Robot Jones, Kids Next Door, Megas XLR, Billy and Mandy, and possibly more. I don't remember. I cannot make a Rebel Taxi vid without bringing that up. Now, Fridays did air in other territories, Latin America, Japan, but maybe the most unhinged was Australia. Uh, just like when the paparazzi here in Townsville photographed me in the back of my limousine with those three young... <laughs> Mayor, Excuse we're here to talk me? about... They make pizza in this episode. Only last week, Miss Bellum, I saw your uh, face on the cover of three magazines. It has been quite an honor, sir, though I was not aware you read such publications. No, <laughs> only when I'm alone. Okay. Clearly, it was a totally different animation team reusing blurry old cell animation rather than the clean new vectors the US had. There were exclusive skits like this parody of Scream, which Ghostface is the same voice actor as Mojo Jojo, yet they didn't use him for this. Do you like scary tunes? Scary tunes? Uh, uh, sure. Who is this? What's your favorite scary tune? Yeah, there was a night where Courage the Cowardly Dog's owner Eustace was hosting. He'd have all these remarks towards Johnny Bravo and that Powerpuff Girls demon him being fruity. <laughs> They're almost as baffling as those stupid leg warmers he wears. Yeah, guess that explains the sissy voice. After that is Johnny Bravo, another posing pants and sissy. Yeah, but that's okay if you're into that kind of thing. I won't ask if you won't tell. Grandpa, we have guest over. Shut the fuck up. Now, outside about two new episodes per week, the CCF block was mostly reruns of Cartoon Network originals, which sounds strange, doesn't it? A block of CN shows on CN? Isn't that what they were already playing? <laughs> Is that it? Well, Cartoon Cartoon Fridays represents a format of TV you just can't do no more. These days, if you want to watch anime, superhero shows, retro animation, and Cartoon Network originals, as well as some French-Canadian series, you'd probably have to pay for like five or seven different streaming services. There's a lot of great shows to watch, but it's just behind so many paywalls. Although, why have a four-hour anime block of a few shows when you can have so much more online? Why have a block of retro cartoons when they could air on their own channel or service? like Boomerang. We have way more options now, but it's all so segmented. Back when TV was thriving, all that was concentrated into like three channels. The network had a little bit of everything to appeal to everybody because every child only had those three options. Well, four if you had Discovery Kids, but it was best to avoid those viewers in the playground. CCF was at oasis of their originals amongst so many other types of shows. Plus, without as much DVDs or internet, those reruns were far more important to the networks as it was the only way to watch them. It's still weird 
weird knowing Dexter's Lab was already cancelled by the time Powerpuff Girls premiered. Unless you count that revival season. TV used to care for variety, but it seems like now each channel tries to appeal to a specific niche or just play the same few shows over and over all day. I complain, but I will watch King of the Hill and The Simpsons endlessly on Channel FX. TV got worse, but the options got bigger, albeit behind paywalls. Though, it is cheaper than cable. Law of Equivalent Exchange, I guess. If Fridays were to return today, all it would be is two new episodes and the stuff they were already playing through the entire week. Sure, you could do a retro block, but they tried that already with Cartoon Planet's revival in the 2010s. It didn't last long. The same thing you watched when you was a little kid. That's kind of dumb. Kind of dumb. We'll be back with more Fridays after this. Hello, I am Rolf. And where I come from, we don't have Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. Instead, we have Grease the Porcupine Thursdays. Oh, it is much fun. But not as much fun as Cartoon Cartoon Fridays, which will be right back after this capitalist propaganda. Oh, don't you hate that? Well... Surfshark VPN! Yes, sir! The sponsor of tonight's video! What's a VPN? It's great! It changes your internet region and protects your privacy. You got Netflix? Just switch regions and bam! You can see what other countries have on their Netflix. It's that easy. How about something to keep you safe, especially on public Wi-Fi? Nothing can stop you. Use the code REBELTAXI to get 83% off and 3 months free. You got a 30-day money-back guarantee. Oh, what? You got an incognito window? on your browser? Wow, that's completely useless. Surfshark VPN, it's got clean web. This thing will block malicious ads, trackers, and malware. Don't trust an internet provider, trust Surfshark VPN. Use the code REBELTAXI to get 83% off and three months free. VPN, money back guarantee. <laughs> The long week is over. The heat of the day has turned into the cool of the night. It's Summer Fridays. So 2003 was when CCF had a brief rebrand. Summer Fridays lasting during that season. There were no hosts as it was just this orangey sunny void. Except they had a night for Christmas in July. I guess that they could reuse the Xmas bumpers one last time. They spent the money on it, they sure as hell better reuse it. This would be the final time as later that year on October during the 11th anniversary of the channel, Cartoon Fridays rebranded. <laughs> This time, Fridays would be hosted in live action starring Tommy and Zynga, along with a bunch of wacky skits on the side. But before I elaborate, this intro, man. There's a lot of Easter eggs to past promos. You got Yogi Bear arguing at the front desk because he lost his ID. There's Chicken, Fred, and Thundar the Barbarian walking together in the parking lot. Both those reference various old channel promos. There's a space reserved for Papa Smurf. Bloody freaking dumb. Wise Papa Smurf. Corrupted by his own power. Can no leader go undated? All these were animated by Primal Screen. Their studio has been making bumpers for decades. They were filmed not at Cartoon Network Studios, but at their parent company's offices in Atlanta. Turner Broadcast. They only dressed it up to look like it was solely for CN. Hey, next MomoCon, can I visit? Oh, and remember this panning shot in the control room? You think this is a real control room? Well, no. It was all green screen, I had no idea. <laughs> Boy, that budget must have been crazy and surely will not mess them up down the line. Now, funny story, when I was a kid and also stupider, I preferred Starfire more than Raven. So in this shot that zooms by quickly, I thought Robin had his hands around Star's shoulder and was kind of jealous. Like that should be me around Robin's arms. Although pausing it now, I realize no, he wasn't doing that and wow, is this off model. Also, wait, did Robin or maybe Starfire Xerox her bare ass? Anyone else noticed this before? Yes, I know in the next shot Baboon's doing it, but that man is clearly pissed at Starfire, so yeah. Any lewd artist out there, do what you want with this info. It's a stunning revelation, but let's get into the show. Hey, 
there, everybody. I am Zynga. And I'm Tommy. And welcome to Cartoon Network's Fridays. Tonight we're going to have... You know what? There's plenty of time for that later. Right now, let's go into a new code named Kids Next Door. Oh, yeah? Okay, everybody, let's go! Yeah! So instead of animated hosts and recycling them often, Fridays was totally new each week. Tommy and Zynga were there with new segments and skits. It was practically a whole variety sketch show. Pomegranate. From what was featured, the best skits were bad clay fables. These were fairy tales told through such garbage as claymation. It is so damn beautiful. Years ago, this was lost media, but thankfully they've been uploaded online. And the moral of our story, slow but steady wins the race. <laughs> You're a fox? Yeah, you look sly. Yeah. While live action was often frowned upon by watchers of the channel, it seems like everybody loved this iteration, but it was tough to make. The two hosts lived in LA, yet it was actually cheaper to fly them to Atlanta and film there. There's a lot of tax benefits and lower prices in Atlanta, which explains why a lot of productions are made in Georgia. They'd usually film two episodes per day with a day of rehearsals prior, though if they weren't around to film any schedule changes, these puppets could fill in the space. It was a ton of work as they never took a Friday off for over three years. This was a massive production, but I remember this way more than whatever Nickelodeon was doing at the time. Fridays was going smoothly until, out of nowhere, co-host Zynga left the show. There was never a public explanation, so I assume she died. She didn't. What actually happened was when this version of Fridays began, she was hired for her hosting abilities. She did a good job, but as the show evolved into having more comedic skits, it wasn't to Zynga's skill set. Her talent was in presenting, not so much comedy. Out of nowhere, Zynga was replaced by a woman named Tara Sands, who you may have heard her voice in a few animes. Tara took over and Cartoon Fridays carried on as the channel would use them for various promos, such as the Summer of 2005 kickoff special. It was 40 minutes of showing off all the cool stuff that was premiering during the summer. All the cartoons, action shows, anime, French anime through the season. Stuff that, again, would all be on different streaming services today. I didn't know it then, but thanks to that, the Cartoon City bumpers, and playing the game City of Heroes, 2005 summer will forever be the peak of Cartoon Network. Yeah. Oh, conveniently, I found this statement by co-host Tommy Snyder when he posted an Instagram pic reminiscing on Fridays. By the way, you may recognize Tommy as he played Beard Hunter in DC's Doom Patrol. Years ago was the start of something big. Episode one of Fridays aired on Cartoon Network. My second audition in Hollywood, fresh from Washington, it would be my first show, my first gig, and my first time on TV. My life has been forever changed because of it. So many great memories, so many great people, and I'm forever indebted to each and every one of you that I got the opportunity to work with, from my PAs to the producers. Every department had special people I love who made the experience unique, fresh, and fun as hell. To my second family, I love and miss you all. Cheers to the good old days, Friday's family. I love you. Fridays was such a great time, and with it being live action, you'd often have interviews for upcoming movies or special musical guests like Amy Lee from Evanescence. You know that band with the song that goes, wake me up, wake me up inside. Make me wear a tie, make me wear a tie, dress me up and dress me like okay, a stop. man. I just found out that's the voice of Breck right there. Oh, oh my, I'm in a pickle. Who will ever help me? Hi, I'm Robbie's sister. I guess that's plain to see. When we watch cartoon cartoons, I'm happy as can be. I think Samurai Jack's cool and Dexter's laboratory. I miss watching Powerpuff. I miss watching TV. We're living on the tour bus, ain't that bad? 
So Amy guest starred to perform a song specifically about her love of the channel. In later interviews, she'd admit the song was pretty cheesy. Yet it actually was dedicated to her little brother, Robbie Lee, who suffered severe epilepsy. With his condition, she knew any day could be Robbie's last. My little brother is 10. Of course he loves Cartoon Network, and it's my favorite channel. So I went to Cartoon Network and did an interview with a puppet, and I wrote a cheesy song on the guitar about Cartoon Network and how much I love and miss it on tour. And it was really stupid. I kind of regret it, but not really. My little brother had a blast, and we got all kinds of free toys and stuff, too. But I feel like I lost all Now, things were changing for both Fridays and me. I was growing up and getting into my old cartoons or better phase starting in 2006. Much of the branding that made the station unique was vanishing. The elaborate cartoon cities were switched to low effort, red backgrounds, and recycled animations. Live action was becoming more prominent. The anime blocks Toonami and Muguzi ended as Friday struggled. It got several more rebrands like Friday Night Premiere Thunder or Fried Dynamite, which neither lasted long. Felt like Scene was trying to copy Disney or Nick with their relatable young hip live action stars. My name is Blake and say hello to Fried Dynamite. It's where my friends and I go to hang out. We about to get wild. I did not care for this. 2007 is when Fridays ended along with much of their ambitious branding. I can see why. Each new Fridays installment was practically a whole TV episode in itself. They probably thought people only watch the shows and won't care about the bumpers, which I guess true. Good shows, just bad presentation like eating a good steak on a paper plate. I can't speak for everybody, but I remember 2006 coming home from the final day of school for summer vacation expecting another extravaganza, but I was quickly bummed out upon flipping channels. I pooted. Hope you've learned a lesson here. Treasure what you have. Don't make the mistake I made. The rock star life is sad. While living on the tour buses. Pretty bad. From there on, Cartoon Network just had some standard bumpers and released their new episodes whatever day of the week they felt like. I grew to love the shows again, but not the packaging. Years have passed and less people are watching TV. To compensate, more commercial time is added, leaving almost no room for any bumpers, let alone intros longer than five seconds. To save time, you'll have the credits overlaid on top of the episode as it's wrapping up. Even when you stream certain shows, it's still overlaid on top. This is so damn unappealing. I like these modern cartoons, but TV lost its presentation. There's no variety in one place. That era is over. And now I'm sure I know the meaning of my life, the love within my soul, the reason I wake up each day and it's Cartoon Network. I miss you so. My Network. Well, it's like the pig says, that's all, folks. And the night is still young. Hey, let's say we all go to Pop's Diner. I can already taste the French fries. No. There is a way something like Fridays I feel could adapt. With live streaming becoming so common amongst people playing shitty games, I'm surprised services haven't done live streams of their own premieres. Make it an event, have a countdown and unique intermissions between episodes as everyone binges together. What's the harm in trying that? It'd be more exciting than just plopping it out at 2 a.m. or whatever. But maybe it's futile. Because think about this, everyone's seen the Looney Tunes, but how many were there viewing them projected in theaters during the 30s? Future generations will stumble onto the Cartoon Network shows we grew up on, but they'll never know the feeling of Cartoon Cartoon Fridays as the sun is setting. These shows will be watched forever, but how they'll be watched will never be the same. 
That just makes them all the more special. Whether or not we always nailed it, the team that made it still considers that time and era to be one of the most special of our respective careers. The word family gets thrown around a lot, but we had a great cast and crew and everyone worked their asses off to make the best show we could every single week for years. And man, did we have fun doing it. Talk about another new episode of Mucha Lucha. Uh, hold on. Mucha Lucha! <clears throat> We've got another new episode of Mucha Lucha Friday at 8.30. Is this any way to treat children? It's a disgrace! Plus, Friday Jones visits the set of Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. We're a lot cooler than you. Uh, I know, and it's all right here on Fridays. This Friday's starting at 7, only on Cartoon Network! Yeah! Human and Reptile.